Well, welcome to Pure Ministries and the Ignited Mentoring Series. I want to share about and really help you understand how the Welsh Revival of 1904-1905 was birthed and how today we can see a global awakening. And I'm sharing with insight from R.A. Torrey. If you were to go back in time and you really want to understand how that revival was birthed in 1904, you have to look at the Keswick Convention at which one of the key speakers was R.A. Torrey. And he shared great insight that I believe helped to see this revival finally birthed. And so I pray that this message would so bless you. I am working on um, writing a book, but I'm also working on a trilogy on Evan Roberts. And the first part will explain um, his early life and how the revival was birthed. And so this is part of that information because I believe it's important that we understand that the pattern that R.A. Torrey is explaining is viable today, just as it was back in 1904. Let me start by praying, Father, just open our eyes to see and ears to hear. We want to receive from you a word in season. Holy Spirit, make the word alive to us. Let us have revelation of the word that penetrates and imparts to us your purpose, your desire and that it bears fruit in us and through us. Father, we seek a revival, and I believe that you're stirring us to come and ask for the rain in the season. Give us wisdom so that we understand the times and we know what to do by your Holy Spirit. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, and the church said, Amen. Now, I believe revival is a divine assault on society. Revival comes when the church, when my people will humble themselves and pray. It's about the church. So often we look at the world and sinners sin. And yes, it's getting darker by the hour. But I believe that God is waiting for it, longing for a final harvest. And that He has called us and appointed us and anointed us for such a time as this. In Acts 3, 19 and 20. Peter said, Therefore repent and return so that your sins may wipe, be wiped away, in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, uh, that he may send Jesus, the Christ appointed for you. There are waves, and we see different seasons of revivals and awakenings. And we're in a season right now where we need a fresh move of God. I look at this generation. And if the church does not stand up, we face a fact that a generation will be swept into hell. And we, the church, are supposed to be salt and light and the voice of righteousness on the earth. Every revival is birthed in prayer, as we said, and we must get a burden for this generation. Now, Ari Tori said this, First, we need to pray in and by the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to inspire us to pray and show us what to pray. That's the first rule. See, it's not just us praying nice prayers. And I looked at so many prayer books, particularly today where there's a progressive Christianity. I don't need prayer books. I need the Holy Spirit to teach me how to pray. That I take the words and they are life. I take the promises and by the Holy Spirit have such a revelation of them that I'm standing on confessing and, and uh, identifying myself with the promise. R.A. Torrey said, in regard to the great revival uh, that has come to some day to Israel, God says, I will pour out upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem revival, the spirit of grace and supplication. And what he was explaining is that it all starts where God, by a sovereign hand, begins to stir on the church, call the church to pray, that somehow in our spirit we sense, we know that we, the church, need to pray. And as I look around right now, there's a stirring in the church. There's a stirring, I should put it that way, in the church where we're getting the sense that we need to pray for a fresh move of God. He went on to say, prayer is the vital breath of a true revival. Prayerless revivals are a sham, but we know not how to pray as we ought. And if there's to be an acceptable and effective prayer, the Holy Spirit must help our infirmity and teach us to pray. So if we're going to be effective, if we're going to pray the correct prayer, it's got to be by the Holy Spirit's guidance. That means we need to learn how to get in the secret place, that place of surrender where we hear His voice, that place that we're supposed to abide permanently and our identity, that's where God expects us to be, where the Holy Spirit is able to teach us and show us 
how to pray because we get a hold of the very heartbeat of heaven. Number two, Ari Torrey said, the Holy Spirit must have lordship over all revival activities. And that's hard. We look in today where so many churches have predetermined how God is going to move and how their church is going to play the preeminent role in the revival. And there's certain people that are going to be the voices of the revival. And we've taken over lordship. We look back historically over revivals. What stopped, hindered revivals, is when we got in the way and we took from the Holy Spirit His Lordship and we grieved Him until the place He pulled back. Now, it says, He said this, The Holy Spirit chooses the officers, Acts 20, 28. He directed where His chosen servants were to preach and to work. He also added, All the plans for revival, all the details of the plans should be submitted to the Holy Spirit for His guidance. He should be recognized as the chairman of every committee. Not our determined, let's have a group meeting. Let's have a little discussion and everybody come up with ideas how we're going to see revival. And it's all our flesh or maybe some degree of good. Listen, we need the Holy Spirit. We need to get serious before God and come to the place, recognize that we've been given the Holy Spirit and we need to learn to hear His voice and understand that He needs to show us what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. Number three, the anointing and power come from the Holy Spirit to pray and to preach. And he quoted from Zechariah 4, 6, which says, Not by power, not by might, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. So the anointing, the unction, and the authority in the spiritual realm, the prayer, comes by the anointing of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Not through our grand prayers, not because of our great name, not because of our great ministry, it is by the Holy Spirit. And a lot of time God uses nobodies, but they knew how to pray. We look, of course, at the Hebrides revival where um, Duncan Campbell turns up expecting revival. And there is a nobody that comes up and leads him down the aisle. When they declared it, the service is over. It didn't quite happen. And the man gets down on the ground and begins to pray. And Duncan Campbell, in a great humble way, said he appreciated this man had a relationship with the Lord that he didn't have. And in that instance, as he humbled himself and allowed this man to pray, he touched heaven. And before the man's prayers were finished, the doors had opened and the crowd came in. Oh, if we could get ourselves out of the way and surrender and allow the Holy Spirit to use and do as he sees fit. He said, he said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Paul then writing to the church at Corinth said, I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdoms, but in demonstration of the Spirit and a power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And if God's going to move in this hour, it's going to be in the power of God, not in the wisdom of men, not in any thing that's tied to men. We cannot make revival happen. It has to come by divine sovereign move of the Lord. Number four, the Holy Spirit is the one who convicts us of sin. We must be careful that we don't use the pulpit to preach at people. We must be careful that we don't think that we're the ones that have to convict and bring people to repentance. Uh, R.A. Tori explained, Now it is the work of the Holy Spirit to convict men of sin, and we must depend upon Him to do it. We must ask Him to do it. We must expect Him to do it. Nothing is more futile than to try to convict men of sin by an unaided powers of reasoning that we may possess. The natural heart is so blind, and especially so blind as to its own condition, that the supernatural grace of the Spirit is necessary to open the eyes of the soul to its real condition. But the Spirit The Holy Spirit, where dependence is placed upon Him, is constantly administering His power to convict even the most careless of sin. And when we get out of the way and we honor the Holy Spirit and allow Him to be and do what He's supposed to be, we see Him move with power and we see Him do. Listen, I've seen people try to be the Holy Spirit and people will temporarily receive or claim to receive Jesus only to denounce Him later because it wasn't real. But see, the Holy Spirit understands. He reads the very heart of somebody. He knows the right word to say, how to say it, and how to touch somebody and turn their heart. So let us get out of the way of the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to move. And he talked about this, that it comes from a holy desperation for Him. 
okay? The Holy Spirit is the, uh, the Holy Spirit only works with power when men deeply realize their need of Him. And many of so-called revivals, men feel that they themselves are quite sufficient for the work at hand. They think that they can only have the right that they only have the right plans if they sorry, let me read this again. They think that they only could have the right plans and the right machinery and the right advertising and the right sort of singing and preaching, the results would follow. In other words, we build this marketing plan, this business plan, and we assume if I do all this, God bless it, it will work. And we have come to a mindset that God, you know, I'll do all this, bless it, instead of finding out what God desires and what He is blessing. It comes and starts with a holy desperation, recognizing our own weakness, our own lack, that our efforts will not produce the results necessary. If we look around, why are we not seeing the revival on this, in this hour on the earth? Because too many of us are trying to do it according to our plans, with our marketing. I love one research with this church around, and they saw deficiencies. And so they did some marketing research. What's the problem? And they came to the conclusion it was their marketing. So now they're going to change their marketing plan. Didn't you recognize it? it was because of all your marketing, all the things you were doing, trying to appeal to, touch uh, people on the natural plane instead of getting hold of the Spirit and allowing the Holy Spirit to work. We fortify our own stupidity. Um, number, or the next part is we have to fix our eyes on Him. In this hour, as we look around and we see a world that's getting so dark, it's easy to get our eyes on the sinner, on the sin. But it's in a time of great darkness that His glory comes in us and we're called to arise and shine. Tori said, if we get our eyes on any man, on any company of men, the Holy Spirit cannot work. God tells us that He has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise and the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty and the base things of the world and the things which are despised and the things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. Then God tells why He's chosen the foolish things in order that no flesh should glory in His presence, which of course is 1 Corinthians 1, 27 through 29. And right now, we have all these people that we've disqualified. You're not in my network. You're not doing it my way. And you're, you're lesser. You're not the right person. And we've got to be careful because we might find those that we discard, those that we reject, become the very tools that God accepts. Because like David, where his family didn't even remember when Samuel turned up and said, I've come to anoint somebody as king. Let me check all the brothers out, the sons. Goes through them all. Is there another missing? And they're like, oh, David, we forgot. And even after he got anointed, his brothers still rejected him and his father never received. We must be so careful because God in this hour is looking at those that are behind the scenes seeking his face, crying out in a holy desperation. Those are the ones he will use. Those that exalt themselves, he will bring down. It requires a total surrender to the Holy Spirit. I've done a whole thing on the secret place because it's so important that we understand the secret place is where we get real before the Lord. It's the place where we're supposed to abide permanently, but we don't like to because why? We are exposed there. There's no flesh can abide there and our flesh man dies and we don't like it. We are brought and forth and every weakness, everything in us that needs to be killed or changed is magnified, revealed by the Father for the very purpose of killing it so that we no longer walk according to the old, but we walk according to the new. Tori said this, if we should uh, see a mighty work of God's grace, the deepest longings of our hearts should be that in all our meetings, everything about them should be surrendered absolutely to the control of the Holy Spirit. Then we shall see great things. In previous generations, they saw great moves of the Holy Spirit and revivals. So it's not difficult, but there is a price to be paid of total surrender. If we came prayed up, if we came and we actually had a real relationship with the Lord, if our prayer life went beyond simply when we turn up the church and we get up the front, we all pray. But rather we have a real intimacy with the Lord, the prayer life that is vibrant and living and now, so that when we gather together, we're full of the Spirit. We know how to hear and yield to the Spirit, and God can use us more effectively. 
Paul wrote, for all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Romans 8, 14. And we know that all of creation is groaning for the revealing of sons, never more so in this hour, where we see the shakings and the things that are occurring on the earth. And it's time for the church to rise up and by the Spirit of God to begin to preach this gospel. Tori said this, If there is anything absolutely clear in the Word of God, in Christian history, and in individual experience, it is that the Holy Spirit is given in its fullness an answer to definitive prayer. When we come and we truly seek His face, the precious Holy Spirit is given. God is not holding He gave Him on the day of Pentecost. He is available, the same Holy Spirit, waiting for us to simply receive. And God is willing to pour out a fresh downpour of the earth, a fresh move of a spirit. We're told in Joel chapter 2, which is an end time prophet, prophetic word, that he would give us not just the latter, but the latter and the former. And of course, the latter rain spoke of uh, the revivals and the former, which of course was a more broad uh, rain, spoke of the awakenings, the early awakenings. And God is not looking just for a revival or an awakening but a mixture of both. And I believe it's a reformation. It's something bigger than we can imagine that's going to shake this earth. One great final harvest. The next thing the Holy Spirit looks for yielded vessels to use. And Jeremiah 17, 5, curses the man who trusts in mankind and makes flesh his strength and whose heart turns away from the Lord. God is looking for those vessels like David because God uses people. And understand that our Tory recognized that God will raise up vessels, vessels that are yielded. And he preached this, of course, in 1904 in Wales. And God would raise up a man, a nobody, from the mines. Not the one that people looked to or expected, but it was a man that was yielded, a man that was seeking after God, a man burdened and broken for his generation, that said, God, I refuse to allow my generation lost. All those hours that nobody saw, all those hours of crying out, saying, God, I'm hungry, I'm desperate for you, look like they were wasted, but God saw them as precious. They were seed sown, and as he was found faithful in that small, God brought him to a place where God was able to use him. Ari Tori said, we will, will we now present ourselves to the Holy Spirit as the agent through whom he may do his glorious work any way he chooses? It may be an invitation, uh, it may be an invitation work, it may be in track distribution, it may be in personal work and singing and preaching in any way he will. This is the great revival coming. The Holy Spirit wants agents for this work. And are we willing to surrender? Many people sing, God, if you could use anyone, use anything, you can use me. But when we sing that song, do we really mean it? Because if the Holy Spirit turned up and said, go do this, would we? Ari Tori said this, and I'm going to finish with this. When any church can be brought to the place where they will recognize their need of the Holy Spirit and take their eyes off from all men and surrender absolutely to the Holy Spirit's control and give themselves to much prayer for His outpouring and present themselves as His agents, having stored the Word of God in their heads and hearts, and then look to the Holy Spirit to give it power as it falls from their lips, a mighty revival in the power of the Holy Ghost is inevitable. And we've got to come to the place where it's not church as normal, where we come filled up, that we actually are living this thing out. It's not just we turn up on Sunday morning and we have a great service, we hear a great word, and it inspires and blesses us. But we're living this thing out. When you, if people were able to tape, videotape your whole life, they would see you behind the scenes seeking the Lord. Getting in the Word and the Holy Spirit giving you revelation and you're feeding on this and you're building it. And that you are going after God yourself. That you have made the secret place your permanent dwelling place. You've not just visited, bought the t-shirt and left. I'm grateful, God, that I've received you and I've got my insurance plan that when I die, I go to heaven. We're here on the earth for a purpose. And God wants us to be found in that place where we're in Him, identifying our new life in Him, walking as His. I'm not my own, but I'm bought with a price. And when I surrender and allow the Holy Spirit to breathe on me, to use me, 
And I am willing to humble myself and allow God to use anyone He sees fit, to use me how He sees fit. If I will be prayed up, if I will go after Him and seek Him, if I will build a treasure house in my, in my spirit, man, of His Word, and the anointed Word, where the Holy Spirit's breathed on it. I think, you know, we pray over our food. Let's pray over the Word before we open it so that the Holy Spirit breathes on it, gives us eyes to see, ears to hear, and that Word penetrates and imparts the life that we need. If we get real, God is looking for a real church, a church without spot or blemish that goes after Him, that He can rise, can use, and raise up powerfully in this hour so this generation might be touched and reached. Well, I pray that you're encouraged, blessed, and I want to so provoke you to go after the Lord like never before. Consider checking out more uh, videos we've done on The Secret Place that you understand that that's your permanent dwelling place. And that's your identity, that Jesus gave you access through the finished work of the cross, that you would come there and that you would be changed and transformed, that we don't just turn up to church, but we be the church, that we would be Christians, recognizing that we've been bought with a price. I am not my own. And we now live for Him and for His glory. And we're chasing after that we might be found in Him. Amen? I want to so encourage you. I want to just bless you in the name of Jesus. And ask of you to seek the Lord for the rain in its season. We need a mighty move of God. Would you stand with me daily praying, seeking the Lord, that we might see a move of God on this earth, that we would refuse to allow this generation to be lost, and say, Holy Spirit, I surrender. Use me whatever way you desire. Let Jesus be magnified and glorified. If we will lift Jesus up, He will draw all men unto Him. Amen? Well, thank you. Be blessed. Be encouraged in the precious, glorious name of Jesus. Amen.